Now when we simulate, you can see that the sword stays in the character's hand. Now we want to place an object in front of the character to give the sword something to strike. So from the main toolbar, click Create Box Collision Object. In the new Collision Objects property view, change its height and length parameters to 0.25. Now we can position this object so that it sits in front of our character and gives him something to strike with his sword. And again, I'm going to give you some explicit values to type in the object's property view to speed things along. So for the Y position, enter a value of 1.08 and for the Z position a value of 3.1 and if we simulate now you can see that the sword strikes the collision object but the character's arm goes no further than the sword will allow so its position is dictated by the sword whereas the reference character's arm follows through all the way as it did in the original animation but because the top half of our simulation character's body is driven by active animation and therefore is in simulation we can very easily modify this animation and the first thing we're going to do is change the weight of this sword. So to make it heavier, select it and move to its property view. And we can increase its density value to 10. And this time when we simulate, you can see that our simulation character's arm is somewhat delayed by comparison to the reference character. And that's because it's heavier, and so it's taking more effort for the simulation character to lift it. But it'll become even harder if we make the character itself somewhat weaker and to do that we can select the sword swipe event on the timeline move over to its strength value in the property view and reduce that from a value of 1 to a value of 0.3 and this time when we simulate you'll see that it's even harder for that character to lift the sword up in fact he slumps right over early in that animation his head goes down because his entire upper body is now considerably weaker and there are other ways we can modify this animation for example we can change the way that the sword interacts with the collision object and we're going to do that now by changing the material properties of the collision object. But first of all, let's return the character's strength through the sword swipe animation event back to a value of 1. Now select the collision object and in its property view change the material from default to rubber. So now let's take a look at the material properties of the sword. And to do that we can select the sword in the viewport and move to its property view. And in its material field we can see that the value is set to default. So what we want to do is look at the way that the default material and the rubber material interact with each other under simulation. And to do that, we can select anywhere in the background of the viewport and move over to the simulation settings property view where we can scroll down until we reach material pairs. And this is where we begin to define the way that different material pairs interact with each other. And we're interested in default and rubber materials and that's currently set to bouncy, which is fine. But we have control over the way that the bouncy interaction behaves. So let's scroll up now until we reach material interactions and we can see that we have a material interaction of bouncy and these values define the way that the bouncy interaction behaves and we're interested in the restitution value which is effectively the bounciness of the interaction and we want to drop that from a value of 4 to a value of 2 to make it slightly less bouncy. So now let's simulate and this time as the sword strikes the block it bounces off but as it comes back down, you can see that it actually strikes the block twice there and there again. To avoid this, I'm going to increase the weight of the sword, and I can do that by selecting it in the viewport, and in its property view, changing the density value from 10 to 15. This time when we simulate, you'll see that the sword bounces once off of the block, but on the way down misses it. And that's because the body of the character, the upper body and the arm, are behaving differently because the weight of the sword has changed. And this change of behaviour is possible because the character is being driven not only by the animation, but also by the dynamics of the situation. So now let's select the collision object one more time and change its material from rubber to sponge. And this time when we simulate, we'll see that the sword passes right through the collision object and out the other side. And again, his upper body and arm behave differently and appropriately for the position of the sword. And finally, let's make the sword stick into the collision object before it passes all the way through. And to do that, we're going to use a constraint. So let's go down to the Audio Motion 1 character's timeline. And you can see that currently all the event tracks are taken up. So we're going to need to create a new one. So right click on the Audio Motion 1 character's name and select Add Event Track. Now we can right click in that event track and create a constraint event.
Now we want this constraint to begin at just about the point where the sword passes through the middle of the block. Let's go to just about there, just somewhere in the region of frame 50. So if we move that constraint to begin at frame 50, and we'll make it last for about 45 frames so we can end it somewhere in the region of frame 95. Now we need to select the constraint event in the timeline, move to its property view, click the select command, and select the sword as the target for this constraint. So now when we simulate, the sword will become stuck in the block and the motion of the character's arm and upper body are dictated not only by the animation but also by the fact that the sword has become stuck in the block. So you can see that animation can be applied to characters in different ways. Using active animation allows the character not only to follow an imported animation using its internal muscle system but also to react and interact with his changing environment.